Welcome to part 2 of my SOB filter overview video. In part 1 we looked at all the features and if you haven't seen that yet head to the link in the video description below. In part 2 we're going to look through some patch ideas. So I'll start really simple and create a typical synth bass line. We have a square sub and a saw from an audio frequency generator which is coming into an STG dot mix. And then the mix of those two signals are going out into the SOB filter. We're then going out of the SOB into an attenuator before going to my sound card for recording. We're currently in high pass mode and I'll play around with the settings as the sequence plays. I'm then adding an envelope by turning up the CV attenuator and then I'm going to play with the input gain in the wave folder finding some sweet spots between the mix of the wave folder and the input gain. output now and go into the bandpass output. And then finally onto the low pass output, it's got a really nice smooth filter, it's not always dirty unless you want it to be. In some ways it sounds like a sort of fatter version of my old Roland SH09. get an octave up type effect from the wave folder as well with certain signals. The next patch I want to look at is the Korg MS20 filter trick which has got a high pass filter before a low pass filter in series. As the SOB isn't a dual filter I'm going to use that in high pass mode and then go into the Frequensteiner filter which is next to it and that's in low pass mode. The trick is to boost the bass using the high pass filter using a high resonance so as you raise the cut off you can find a sweet spot where the resonance really starts to boost the bass in the signal. the SOB resonates to the point of self oscillation I'd say that this even goes too far for this effect which makes it good for more extreme effects and quite easy to dial it back and find a good sound. If I reduce the resonance you can hear it gets significantly thinner and bringing it back up really boosts the bass. So the two filters work really nice together and the SOB gives it a great bass boost. So now I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the SOB as a phaser. I've got a chord patch coming out of the Mutable Instruments braids oscillator and that's going into an STG dot mix. I'm also multiplying that signal out which is going into the SOB filters input. I'm coming out of the bandpass output on the SOB with quite a lot of resonance we can start to add a nice phaser style sound by mixing in the resonant bandpass with the original signal. And rather than manually moving that we can bring in an LFO to the SOB to start getting that moving phaser sound. So that sounds good to me, but things start to get more interesting when you invert the sound. So I've got the SOB's output going into another mixer which can invert the output, which is turning that bandpass filter into a notch filter when we mix that with the original sound. And to me that makes a much nicer phaser effect.
So I'll bring up the CV attenuation on the LFO. So turning up the notch and the mixer now, which is this one, and then the top one is the original sound. And now the same thing with a slightly faster LFO rate. So the next patch is going to be a dubstep, sort of gritty, wobbly filter type effect. I've got clock coming out of a tap LFO, which is clocking a make noise brains and two pressure points for sequencing. I've got pitch and modulation coming from the sequence into a mutable instrument's braids oscillator. I've then multiplied the clock from the tap LFO to sync a ULFO, which isn't syncable, but it resets the waveforms against that main clock. I'm then coming out of the shaped sine wave on the ULFO to the SOB's filter CV, and I'm coming out of the low pass output, and then lifting the cutoff, here's what we're getting from the braids. You can already hear a lot of modulation running in the sequence, so now I'll play around with the filter. Turning up the CV attenuation on the SOB, you can hear the ULFO start to affect the filter's cutoff. So here's another patch which is a pretty quick one and when I'm taking the high pass, band pass and low pass outputs we're going into a dope for A151 sequential switch with the changes in that switching coming from the tap LFO clock next to it. I've also got the clock going into a gate to trigger converter to get some really nice short triggers to ping the Vactral on the SOB so we can get some Vactral modulation of the cutoff as well as switching between the outputs. So as well as the clock pinging the Vactral in the SOB filter, I'm going to take the LFO's output, which is a sine wave, and also modulate the cutoff with that. So here's the next patch, which is going to be FM modulation of the filter. I've got a saw wave going into the filter, and if I bring this cable into the CV, I've got an audio rate sine wave coming from an IntelliGel Dixie oscillator, which is going to modulate the filter. So changing the rate and pitch of the oscillator, we get different sort of FM filter sounds. So I'm also going to add an envelope to this, but as I've used the CV input for the oscillator, I'm going to use the one volt per octave input, which gives us some vowel chirps and yoy sounds. So for the last couple of bits of video, I'm going to bring in some external inputs from outside the modular. I've got a cheesy sort of super saw trans chord riff, which is going into an animodule tranny module to bring the line level up from my sound card right up to modular levels. The MIDI that's sequencing the soft synth, I'm also sending out to the modular so I can take the gate pattern and trigger an envelope to play with the filter as well. The SOB sounds great on Soft Sims and adds a lot of character that's not coming from the DAW itself. And then adding the envelope on the CV input of the SOB, we can get some nice tight filter plucks as well. And then playing around with the envelope, there's lots of nice response from the filter.
So for the final patch, I'm going to run some drum loops out of the computer into the SOB. Again, I'm using the Anna module, Tranny module, to boost levels up to the RO levels. And I'm just going to play around with the filter and the waveforder on the filter. There's a few drum loops mixing and out. So that concludes the second part of the SOB filter overview video. If you haven't seen the first part yet, head to the video description underneath here where you can grab the link to part one. As always, feel free to comment and message on here or you can tweet at DivKid on Twitter if you want to chat about anything. Subscribe for more videos coming soon, including an overview of the RYO Opto Dist, the Anna Module Tranny Module. I've got a five filter low pass shootout coming and lots more. If you've seen anything in my setup that you'd like to see or hear more of, feel free to let me know and I'll get a video together.